<laughs> Welcome back to another edition of the Owl Talk. We thank you for rejoining us and we hope that you've been enjoying the last few episodes that we have had. I'm very honored today to be sitting here with our Grand Herald of Sigma Pi Fraternity, Brother Ryan Post from our Beta Tall chapter of Valparaiso University. Ryan, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. Absolutely. Uh, one of the key things we like to ask all of our all of our guests, uh, especially so our members can uh, learn more about you, is why did you join Sigma Pi Fraternity? <laughs> Good question. My girlfriend's asked it several times too. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it boiled down to just uh, common uh, camaraderie. I mean, I, my uh, floor freshman door, uh, I think 75% of my pledge class was all on the same floor. So it was just, I mean, the guys at the time in the chapter, they did a really good job of going out immediately and finding a bunch of guys, and they recruited all four. So it was just like so much easier to make that decision. I didn't go to college expecting to join a fraternity, very quiet, introverted kid. I wasn't going to join. But when my buddy Brandon Spinner was like, yeah, I'm going to join. Are you going to join? All right. Yeah, I guess I will. I'll give it, a, give it a shot. I like all the guys and everything. But yeah, it was an easy decision though. So well, that's interesting. So you didn't think of joining? No, sure. absolutely. What was the one thing that you said, Brandon Spinner? What mm -hmm. what was that that said, let's go check it out? Was there? Just... I, honestly, it was just we went and saw, seen a movie with the guys. The guys were like, hey, you just want to go see a movie? Yeah, all right, all right I'll go see a movie. Hey, we're going to go down to the house afterwards, hang out. Yeah, all right, I'll take along. I don't know what you've been about. Well, there's nothing to do there. I mean, yeah, I'll go hang out. We'll try something new. It was just a nice genuine brotherly experience just guys hanging out chill first experience was great the the first experience yeah that was the first experience at the house yeah being up there and just seeing everybody seeing what's yeah. happening and yeah. um and then with that so you you got in did, did you wind up what kind of leadership roles I was immediately uh, pretty much immediately after initiation i was handed the position of the house manager and that was upkeep of the house they, they realize they're like, holy crap, this kid brought a toolbox with him to college. Like, yeah, you got to have tools to fix things. You don't know what's going to break. Well, he, All right, here's your first position. So that was pretty immediate there. And then uh, next election cycle, I got elected as vice president. And after vice president, I became the Herald. And now here I am as the Grand Herald. Well, and, and it's interesting, too. Like, what are some things for our viewers out there? Um, what did you learn from... Being the house manager, number one, mm -hmm. is not an easy job. No. People don't realize that. Nope. To then becoming the vice president, becoming the head. <laughs> what are some things that you learned about yourself throughout that administration? Yeah, I mean, the house manager is all action-oriented. Hey, if something's broke, you got to fix it. Plain and simple. Hey, water pipe broke. All right, go fix it. Water mains broke. Again, go fix it. Call someone. To, what are you doing asking me? Go call someone. So very action-oriented. Um, then going to vice president, I mean, that was the first experience that I had, you know, in a leadership position, managing other individuals, managing all those committee heads, making sure that they're doing the tasks that they're set out to do. Hey, that was very large learning experience. Um, sort of put me on a pedestal there. I became president of Society of Automotive Engineers on campus too. Small club, but still like the guys looking around like, no one wants to do it. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it. It's not that hard. Um, but then, you know, my first interview with Whirlpool, you know, still to this day, I remember my hiring manager, you know, he looked at me and goes, hey, we looked at a lot of applicants. You were the only one that had any amount of leadership experience on their resume. Interesting. I didn't think it would be that hard. But no, I still value all that to this day it's just every experience that any individual can get in any setting if you reflect upon it and learn from it you're going to be a better person and and speaking of that too with the reflecting and learning upon it you stayed involved mm -hmm. as well as chapter advisor mm -hmm. and um your housing court keeping mm -hmm. a lot of people involved what was it about this experience as, a, as an undergraduate right you become vice president become Harold working with all the your chapter brothers 
what made you say, I'm going to continue to give back? Because yeah. not everybody does. Oh, absolutely. Very far people still are involved to this day. I mean, across the country we see it. But I mean, I graduated and I was like, man, Beta Tau, that is my home. I have so many good experiences, so many learnings. It has changed me in such a positive and profound manner. That is my home. I am still going to support that. I look at myself, you know, I was, like I say, very introverted, very quiet kid coming to college. I was not leaving my dorm room unless it was class or eating. Um, but Sigma Pi, that's what's brought me here to this day. So it's like, you know what? If I can make Beta Tau better, I don't know how many kids are going to come through that were just in my shoes. You know, how, how can I improve the lives of one, just one, start with one. All right, now going to 10, now 20. Now I'm here on Grand Council. So how, how can we now expand? How can we make thousands of lives better? Well, and let me ask you too, is like you get into the Grand Council. One, being involved as, and I think this is a great thing for our up and coming volunteers, right? Is you're involved locally. Mm -hmm. um, you, you are helping these young men learn how to be leaders, get out of their shell. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um to now being on the national level, right, as a, as a member of the Grand Council, what has that experience kind of been like? It, it's been a new new experience, like, a, you know, 10 years of being a volunteer solely focused on one group of undergrads, and now, you know, that was day-to-day -day mentorship of, you know, did little Jimmy go to class today? Hey, you know, he's not doing this. Now it's, I mean, such profound conversations that we're having that it's, it's really going back to one of my fundamentals of continuous improvement each and every day, find out how to make yourself better. And I found myself at a time, I was like, Hey, I, I want to get, let's try this green council position out. Let's try and go to that next stepping stone of how can you make a larger impact across a wider audience? now I'm sitting here enjoying every bit of it. I mean, some of the conversations that we got to have on, on our meetings are very difficult, but still the, the impact that I'm able to give to Sigma Pi. What I give in, it's giving to our members tenfold easy. So, so easy. No, and, that, <laughs> and, and you know, kind of with that too is um, with our young along, <laughs> right, um, who are graduating school. And they're trying to figure out how to give back. As somebody that has been really involved mm -hmm. with local chapter as well, what are the myriad of ways I mean, that a young alum can stay involved after you graduate? Absolutely. I mean, there's there's so many ways. Um, right up now, I'm trying to grow our chapter educational fund, trying to make that as strong as possible. And it starts with, hey, I know you just graduated. You may have some debts and stuff can you commit to just 10 or $20 a month? It's not that much when in the grand scheme of things. Once you put it in there, then it becomes part of your lifestyle. You don't even see that money. But if I start with one, now I'm going to go to a second one. Now I got two, and then I'm going to 10. Just start by giving back. I understand not everyone can give monetarily, but give your time as well. Come back, hey, if we're... As the alumni, if we're going to come and fix the house and do a work day, mow the lawn, paint the house and stuff, come back, paint the house. It doesn't always have to be a monetary gift to, to the fraternity. You know, what are ways that you are also connected in your business world? Like, are you a Whirlpool? Yeah, I can give you cheaper appliances. It's easy for me. Here's your code. Go buy it. Doesn't cost me a dime to do that. So there's things that, you know, if you're an artist as well, like, hey, do you want to make some art for a house? Like, do you want to make some art for an auction that we want to want to run? What is what is it about you? What is your personal skill set that you believe that you can leave a benefit on? It's not always opening up your wallet. Certainly, we love when people open up their wallet, but it's not always the only option. Yeah, because I know one that getting to know you over the years. I know you have a huge passion for for especially helping those guys mm -hmm. on, at the local level. Mm -hmm. um, 
we've had a lot of late phone calls. I think we've had some bad experience, yeah, yeah. <laughs> BAT bat experiences and everything else that there was you guys. Um, but, but I, I think too, one of the things that I kind of want to look at is, as volunteers and, you know, people can get volunteer at the local level. Um, what are some thoughts you have for, for the students on how to work with alumni? Mm -hmm. What are, what are, cause a lot of the students, they don't know. Call. Right. 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 What are some thoughts you would have on, Hey, use your network and here's a good way to get a hold of those guys mm -hmm. that are working full-time jobs. Right. Right. I mean, that's, that's a struggle to this day. You know, my predecessor chapter advisor for, for foul police, you know, having some issues, like, how do I contact these guys? I'm like, mm -hmm. it's always going to be a struggle on how to figure out, but it's first about building that relationship, building that connection. The face-to-face, -face, that's so valuable. So, hey, when you have alumni coming to your property, coming to your house, coming to an event, take five minutes, shake their hand, introduce yourself, meet them, get their contact info. Starts just as simple as that. So build that connection. And then once you build that connection and you start to understand who actually is in your alumni base, hey, now I can start getting more comfortable to call you. Um, you know, our undergrads, hey, reach out to your chapter advisor because, you know, the chapter advisor is going to go, you know, way more alumni. Uh, when I was CA, um, it's like, hey, you know, we can, we can set up some mentorships here. You know, we have guys going into college, getting their degree. What do they want to do after college, though? And one of them, you know, he spoke up and said, hey, I'm going to law school afterwards. Oh, that's a big step. Mm -hmm. Reached out to some of my brothers. Hey, they're in law school right now or just graduated law school. Hey, you mind taking an hour of time talking to the kid? They ended up talking like every month or so, and all is history after that. Guy's in a great spot now. The contacts, concepts, and control. Exactly. Um, what would be, if you think, I'm going to come back just you a little bit more, is did, did you have any mentors in school when you were an undergraduate? Were there any mentors that, that you really kind of listened to and helped you understand life as a young man? a pretty difficult question to answer because I really don't like very few people stand out in terms of mentorship I've always been a very independent person you know trying to gain that perspective of I'm going to be my own self and I'm going to be the result that I want to achieve I've always been very independent my my, my uh, academic advisor he, uh, he gave us all the assignment of writing a little, just a short thing about vocation. I talked about how I wanted to work for Whirlpool. It's in my hometown. I'm an engineer. I want to go work there. He docked me points because I was too specific. Says, no, you need to broaden your horizons. Well, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good now. So, uh, I, I kind of took that a little personally, used that as a little fuel to the fire there. Um, Academic wise, not really though. Too many mentors going on there. I like I say, really just self taught, self motivated. And so maybe not the mentor side, but I know you are very close to some of your chapter brothers. Um very, very close. You guys have some very tight mm -hmm. on relationship. Would you say that those have probably been very powerful oh, yeah. quasi mentor yeah. collaborative? Oh, what, absolutely. What are those relationships? I mean, the relationship Smitty and I have, I mean, you, you've seen it firsthand. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely great. I mean, you know, his personality, me, quiet, introverted kid and him rolling up and his loud car and everything, loud personality, big and jovial. Who is this guy? Just started to interact with him more and more. He was difficult in some things, but I mean, Again, he's a very action-oriented person. He's a results-based person. Yeah, hey, come on, let's go do that. Let's stop talking. Come on, let's go do it. And it's it's just blossomed over the years, and we've grown within our impacts as well. You know, doing the uh, mid-year leadership conference. You know, he was the one that recruited me for that. I wasn't volunteering, but he was like, yeah, hey, come do this. All right, yeah, we'll do that. I, I trust you. You trust me. It's just been a great relationship over the years. Well, and, and I get to witness it. So I see it. Um, 
And and you know it's an interesting thing too, Ryan, because there's a lot of people that that in this world we're in that think fraternities are bad. Yeah, think that young men are bad. Mm-hmm. Um, think that fraternity guys embody this persona that mm-hmm. most of us are like. What is that persona? Right. How would you say that the fraternity? I mean, I'm I've already kind of hearing it a little bit, but being that that introverted guy finding your home. Mm-hmm your brothers, how, how would you say that, no, this is definitely for everybody? Mm-hmm. No, it absolutely, I mean, absolutely is. And I, when I first started dating my girlfriend, hey, what is Sigma Phi? She didn't go to a large college. She didn't know about fraternities or anything. Her parents don't know about it. What one is he in? Oh, Sigma Phi. Oh, let me Google it. Sure enough, I'm, I'm sure you saw, I'm, you probably know what uh what came up. So it, it it's always difficult when that's the first thing when people are trying to understand what is sigma pi, what is fraternity life. But then it takes you know myself, yourself, all of our undergrads, our young volunteers to take it upon themselves. Like no, I'm gonna be the exemplary example of why fraternities are still relevant in today's age. What benefits? can fraternities provide? And so, you know, learning about, hey, we give scholarships. Kids are kids are struggling to pay their uh, college tuition. They are struggling. We can give you scholarships. We have networks that can um, give scholarships. We have a vast network that can also help you with job placement once you graduate. There's just tons of resources out there, but going beyond that, just the personal skills of communication Hey, having to get up and give a report at chapter, something as simple as that, you do that for 20 weeks out of the year, four years, you're going to be in a whole different spot than what you were if you would, would have just sat in your dorm room, did your homework, watch TV, and play video and came. Well, and it's interesting, too, to that point is earlier you had even mentioned that when you interviewed at Whirlpool, they saw that you had far more leadership mm-hmm. roles than others. How would you, because you're now a lead engineer, mm-hmm. um, how would you say that what you learn helps you become better at, at your role? And it, might, it sounds like, I keep hearing you talking about the communication piece. Mm-hmm. It sounds like that probably you learn something. Oh, yeah. I mean, communication is always going to be the, a big aspect of, of the business realm. But also, again, action-oriented and culture of accountability. Um, like I just talked to our undergrads about mid-year uh, performance reviews. Hey, did you deliver what you say were, you were going to deliver or not? That's what we're here for. I'm here to make a good product. That's what you're here for. We're going to work and we're going to deliver our results together. I got to go to the CEO sometime. My, my my report gets to go there. I don't directly physically get to be there yet, but um, hey, we're going to go there together. But it's also about the team aspect, too, that I think fraternity also is a very good job of uh, instilling within our our undergrads, you know, having that team mentality of, I have your back and you, I know you got mine. I tell my team members, Hey, I understand you got some problems. You made a mistake. I'm going to fight that for you. You go resolve it. You focus on that. I'm going to be here for you. And it's led to, you know, some of my team members, you know, coming to me with some very tough issues, some very personal issues as well, but just instilling that trustworthiness i got your back you got mine i mean that's that's all fraternities i know we can do it <laughs> <laughs> yes we can and it, and it does help you know that's uh you know I've, I've talked with some of our other guests here and the, as students we have no idea what we're going to get out of it no and 10 20 years later you're looking back on i learned that when i was in school mm-hmm. i learned that sitting on the front porch as we were arguing about whatever project we had to do that week. Um, What would be some things to, you've been involved long enough to see change Mm -hmm. fraternity. Uh, That change drove you to be involved in the Constitution and Bylaws Committee, Grand Council, Chapter Advisor, all the different roles that you've had. What, What have been some of the exciting changes, like say maybe somebody hasn't been involved in a while. What would be some exciting changes you want to kind of tell them about of, hey, come and see this. There's a reason why we want. I mean, 
convocation last year in Texas. Oh my word. That was, that was a great experience. I, I don't, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been sitting at the Alamo hanging out with a barbecue and all that, and all of that fanfare. Like we have done such a good job of improving the events, improving the social aspect too. We're not spending it all entirely on business. We're not fighting within those business meetings. We're enjoying the brotherhood more. So going beyond that, even events like this, Sigma Pi Engage, we're here downtown Chicago. We're going to go out. We're just going to hang out as guys. Like, come out, grab a drink, get involved, update your info, because I know that's another big thing too. I was trying to rally a bunch of guys and I'm like, I'm not even in Chicago anymore. I'm like, well, got to update your stuff. So, I mean, it, it's, again, just come back for those little things, whether it's your chapter throwing on a new event, go back for that. If you haven't been back in 10 years, this year is the year to go back and do that. Just come back. We doing events across the country. We have New Jersey coming up. We got Arkansas coming up. Like, come out, have a good time, meet some new brothers. I, I tell you what, in mid-year too, back when we used to have that, I don't know how many close brothers I have today that I've only met because of mid-year. So it's a, just a great experience, especially for our uh, chapter advisors, province archives. Go to those events, meet more alumni, build more relationships. Hey, at the end of the day, I mean, it, that's what it's about, mm -hmm. right, is coming together, understanding that we're coming together as brothers. I think once we shake hands, we know, okay, we're, we're all good. Right. Um, and then building it. Right. Right, is I know I get to work with you, being on the council, and a lot of times what we're doing is trying to figure out we need to hear from our people, right? Mm -hmm. We need to hear what are they looking for? How right. do we make this a good experience for them? Right. Um, and hopefully we're able to continue that mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, I guess another thing would be is I know that uh, you're also highly involved on the housing side of things with your place. Any kind of cool little updates? I know you guys have been having a lot happening. And yeah, a lot, lot has a new, new dig. Yeah, new digs are coming up. We did probably about a $700,000 reconstruction project on one of our two houses, tore it down to the studs, uh, rebuilt it back up afterwards. Uh, we are tickled pink to have our members move in for this fall semester. Um, I'm delivering the appliances next week. The kitchen's just about done. The floors are in. It looks magnificent. Um, I've been inside i've toured the new layout of the house it is so much better than before i am so jealous of our undergrads <laughs> because this house is 10 times better than what i lived in i mean their facility is just going to be a top-notch facility especially on campus and it it goes back to hey this is a lifelong dedication that we have to our members our alumni we're going to step up i don't get anything out of this new house but here's my money because I know it's better for our members. Our members are more likely to succeed. We're more than likely to get more members by having this new facility. So we're going to put more people through Sigma Pi and improve their lives beyond that. And, and I guess with that too, with, with um, what are some words of advice, uh, some words of, of wisdom or encouragement that you have for potential recruits that are looking at the fraternity world mm -hmm. and for current students trying to figure they're already initiated trying to look at where am I going now yeah yeah I mean for the current initiates I mean again go back to your network alumni network and meet meet alumni from other chapters at events like this you know if someone has a similar major hey get their contact reach out on social Connect with me. I don't care. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to anyone. Um, you know, connect with them. I'm always here to be a mentor for any of our brothers, whether it be in the professional world, personal world, whatever it may be. I'm more than happy to be a mentor for anyone, a mentor for people and within Whirlpool, within the jobs that we get. I know that Sigma Pi in any fraternity can be a such a large benefit to so many members across the world. Now, I got one final thing that I want our, our listeners to, to hear, and I actually am glad these are visual so they can see your face. What was it like 
for Beta Tall to win the Grand Sage Cup. <laughs> that I uh, that was I think I, I put it in my Facebook post, but when I when I became chapter advisor, Beta Tau was not in the greatest position. No, no, it was not. Even when I was an advisor, it was not in the greatest position at some points. But you know, when I became an advisor, I again, individual, self motivated person. I set a personal goal. I was like, I want to see Beta Tau host hoist that cup before I leave as chapter advisor. I want to, I know we have the potential to do that. And when I signed up to become on Grand Council, that ate at my decision so bad. Because yeah. I was like, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I think there's still a little bit more, but no, it's time, time to go after that. And it culminated both of those at the same time. It's, you saw the look on Smitty's face. I think he nearly about threw our sage halfway across the, the, uh, the room there with excitement. It was just, and I talked to Paul. Paul's like, we, we won? Really? <laughs> Beta Tau won? Yeah. It's taken a long time, but it's, can continuous improvement year after year. If you're going to make an improvement, you're going to be in such a better position. So it was so good to finally have that recognition there in San Antonio it was incredible. When I think I think what it showed was good leadership, uh, strong desire by the students to mm-hmm. want to you know that they saw that vision. Um, and for our listeners, that means that you're one of the best chapters in the country. We only give out four every two years, um, so I congratulate Beta Tall and all you guys for that. Um, Knowing the history of Beta Tall, I know the two guys were beyond pumped. Um, you know, for our listeners as well, like I know several of your chapter brothers. I've um, been to several of their homes. Um, one of them allows, you know, gives me that opportunity to stay at his home when he's not there, which is awesome. So I just want to thank you, Ryan, for for joining us on this out home. Yeah. And for our listeners, we look forward to uh, to seeing you on our next episode. And and as always, please go and review back any of the past uh, out talks and. Thank you for being here.